Hello. Uh, in today's video, I thought we'd talk about how to take off. Um, a couple of my instructors have asked me to make a video on how to land for students to, uh, to watch, particularly if they're uh, learning towards their recreational pilot license. Uh, but I thought, uh, probably before they need to learn how to land, they need to learn how to take off. And I know when, uh, in many people's eyes, taking off is very simple. You know, blast down the runway and rip back on the stick and away it goes. Um, but it is one of my uh, many pet hates is people uh, not understanding how to take off properly. And uh, by all means, you can just blast down the runway, if everything goes well, you rip back on the stick and away it'll go. However, we can finesse the take off process and make it a bit more smooth and a little bit nicer on the aeroplane and a lot safer in my opinion. So to, uh, to uh, look at some of the problems with the method of just barreling down the runway and uh, till we reach what we call as a rotate speed which is, uh, is something that is, is very variable whereas uh, you know bigger aeroplanes we get different rotate speeds for weights and temperature that sort of thing. A lot of these little aeroplanes just give one speed and uh, sometimes it's just a recommended speed and the reason for that is because it does vary. Uh, so the, uh, the rotate speed is obviously going to be be less as the uh, aircraft gets lighter, or it's going to uh, to take a lot longer to achieve if they if we've got a high density altitude or something like that. So a certain amount of uh, amount of runway to achieve the speed is going to be at one airport, but it may not be the same at the next one. So that's where we can uh, we can fine tune our takeoff technique to account for some of those factors. So. If we're just uh, zooming down the runway, we rip it off the ground like that, then uh, we've already got a fairly nose high attitude and we're hoping the engine keeps going. If it doesn't, then it's a fairly big push to get some, uh, get some energy about the aeroplane to be able to flare again. At the, uh, at the earlier end of the takeoff, if we're holding it on the ground until a set speed that is potentially uh, too high for the situation, then what you'll find is we we'll start to get that nose wheel shimmy. Uh, that's, a, that's a bit of an artistic impression of nose wheel shimmy, believe it or not. And what does tend to happen is the aeroplane starts to wheel back because the wings want to fly and yet the pilot's still insisting that the nose wheel stays on the ground until their chosen rotate speed. So what we can do is we can be a bit nicer on the aeroplane and let it decide the rotate speed for us. So early in the takeoff roll, and this is our runway, believe it or not. We're going down the runway, got a little bit of right rudder, assuming a uh, normal clockwise spinning propeller. As soon as we get a little bit of airflow over the elevators, we can use those to take the weight of the nose wheel. So that's then eliminating that unnecessary nose wheel shimmy. So we're already being kind to the aeroplane. Now, as the aeroplane accelerates a little bit more, the elevators are going to become more responsive. So as we get faster and faster, for the same amount of elevator input, the nose is going to want to come up more. So we can release that back pressure so that we're running along with the nose wheel sitting maybe an inch or two off the runway. And that means as we're doing that and gaining airspeed, we're actually releasing back pressure or slightly pushing forward, which gives us another benefit because if at that moment as we get airborne, we lose the engine, we're already pushing the right way. And if we get airborne and we don't lose the engine, which would be ideal, we're letting it gently accelerate and gently start to climb away rather than an abrupt pitch change, which with it comes all of those, those uh, risks of, uh, of engine failure or control of the aeroplane afterwards. Uh, so that also then allows the aeroplane to be going down the runway at just a slightly positive angle of attack. So that means it's going to get airborne at a speed, i.e. a rotate speed, that is applicable to all of those factors we discussed, like the density and the weight of the aeroplane. So if we're doing that technique and the aeroplane's very light, it'll get airborne at a much slower speed than the same technique, but for a higher weight. And you'll find that, uh, that the, uh, the amount of runway will vary greatly than you're chewing up, you know, depending on the weight of the aeroplane. I use this technique in just about every aeroplane, uh, including the caravan. So the caravan you'll find if you use this technique, so nose wheel off, releasing back pressure, and when light, it'll be almost instantly airborne as we release that back pressure. Whereas when we're up at, uh, at just about four ton, or just shy off in the, in the grand caravan, and um, we do the same technique, exactly the same thing happens, 
excuse me, uh, except for the fact that we'll, uh, we'll get airborne after much more runway. But at least then, the technique is exactly the same, and we're, uh, we're being nice and gentle on the aeroplane, nice and gentle on our passengers as well, and for the reasons we, uh, we just discussed, is that a little bit safer. So, let's go and have a look at it in a real life aeroplane. We'll go and jump to the 172, I'm about to go and fly it from, uh, from here at our base at Cessna, across to our base at Maitland. So, perfect opportunity to talk you through what I've, uh, what I've just been showing you with this aeroplane. Same plane. Okie dokie, we have a key, we'll check it's the right one, yes it is, and we'll start our flow, fuel is on both tanks, elevator trim is set for takeoff, mixture is rich, throttle is cracked open about an eighth of an inch, car beats cold, switches are all off except the beacon, park brakes on, avionics off, Mags to come once we start it up. Uh, primer, we'll give it a half hot, half cold start. We'll call it a warm start. So one prime should do. Primer's been unlocked. Battery master on. Gauges came alive. That all looks happy. Okay. Clear prop. Beat on the brakes. Cross to start. And away we go. Maybe it was a cold start after all. We'll give it one and a half primes. There we go. Okay, all clear. Okay, so as we're trundling down here towards the run-up bay, we can do our pre-takeoff flow or pneumonic. So trim set in the N model 172 that this one is. We don't have a rudder trim, but in, the, in a P and a couple of other ones, can't remember which ones, we have rudder trim as well. Uh, but trim set, trims, mixtures rich, magnetos on both, masters on, propeller is fixed pitch, park brake is off, primer is in unlocked, fuel, we're on both, we've got quantity, these are quite big tanks these ones, so even a quarter in each is, is quite a bit. Fuel flaps are set zero, indicating zero, and visually confirmed zero. Uh, these I find take off a lot nicer with 10 degrees of flap, but for the sake of, uh, of demonstrating the point that we're talking about, we'll just leave zero flaps on this big long runway. Uh, fuel flaps instruments set to 10 to 10, and we're showing 1012, 1012, they're good. That should slave itself, but confirming it, it has. Instruments, switches, taxi light can come on, nav lights can come on. I'll just turn around, pointing roughly into wind. Instruments, switches, controls, full free and correct. The hatches and harnesses are secure. Baggage door, I shut. Cabin door shut, have a seatbelt on, and the passenger seatbelt is done up out of our way. Uh, oil temp is coming up into the green, so we will do our run up. We will just wait until the tug goes past, just so that the aeroplane doesn't leap forward. We better give a wave. Thank you, Dak. So, covering the brakes, T's and P's still in the green. We'll bring this one up to 1700 RPM. And I always like to take the weight off the nose wheel as we do, because otherwise, with the brakes on, it's trying to pull forward. And we don't want to hit the prop if we really compress the nose wheel, or uh, if we're on rocky surfaces picking up rocks. So, bags, that one's good, about 100 RPM drop and sounds smooth. About 100 RPM drop and sounds smooth. Car beat, dropped, got a rise, M8 is positive output, T's and P's are in the green, and it's looking for suction then, this one doesn't have suction because it's all electric. We'll come back down and check our idle. Yeah, it's about 650-700 RPM, and we'll head back to 1000 RPM. 
Okay, so we take a safety brief, taking off on runway 17. If we have an engine fire, failure, major abnormality, whilst we're on the runway, we're going to close the throttle, pull up and brake. If we're airborne with runway remaining, then we're going to lower the nose like full flat, land on the remaining runway, pull up and brake. If we're airborne with no runway remaining, we're going to lower the nose and set the glide attitude, which is around about what we see now. She'll give us about 65 knots, we'll trim for that attitude and we'll pick a field within. 30 degrees at either side of the nose. We'll then use flap as required to get into that uh, into that field, aiming for a full flap just before touchdown. Okay, so confirmation. I use my fuel flaps trim tail wheel after I've done the run-up fuels on both flaps are set zero, which is what we need. Trims are set and tail wheel. We would lock as we line up, but we don't have a tail wheel. That makes that nice and simple. Okay, off we go. Cessna traffic, number Kilo Yankee, 172, lines of runway 17 will be left down with departure for mainland traffic, Cessna. Then, I always have a glance down the runway and a bit of a zigzag to look at where the traffic should be coming from. If there's any clear base, clear final, we had no rebuttal on the wireless, and away we go. So like usual, we'll square off the turn onto the runway so that we're not wasting any runway. And lining up with the runway, if we're unfamiliar with the aeroplane, we would uh, come to a complete stop like this and pause for a moment to absorb what that picture looks like. We can look where the runway cuts the cows, depending on the size of the cows, size of your runway. Basically checking to see that we remember what this perspective is because that's going to help us uh, be uh, aware of the height of the aeroplane when we're coming back into land, which particularly helps when you're flying different types all the time. We'll centre that heading bug. Okay, so heels are on the floor, so balls and feet only on the rudder pedal, so we're not likely to accidentally touch a brake. T's and P's are good, smoothly coming up to full power across about a one, two, three. And there we go, one, two, three, airspeed's alive. I'm in governing, we'll pop the nose wheel and then we can release and see how it just runs along on the mains until it's happy and it just gets airborne at the exact right speed for the weight of the aircraft, the uh, density of the air, all those sort of factors. And you can see the attitudes barely change as we rotate it. It's only now that we're starting to transition to that, uh, that climb attitude now that we have. A, uh, a little bit more uh, height about us, so we've got a little bit, a uh, little bit more in the way of options if we lost the engine. Okay, after takeoff, gears fixed, flap is fixed, power full. That's what we need. Instruments looking good, T's and P's good. Switches, short flight, and it's a fairly dreary old day, so I'm just going to leave the landing lights on. There's 500 feet AGL. We'll go clear right, clear centre, clear left, and around we go. Here's another big error that I find people do is uh, this climbing left turn. They push in a heap of left rudder, which they don't need. It's, uh, it's basically just a little bit less right rudder. And we're approaching circuit height. 200 to go. And we're going to depart off downwind, so we'll square off this crosswind. Clear right, centre and left. And around we go. Again, just backing off that right rudder we've got in in the climb. Leveling off at our circuit height, attitude, speed, power coming back, and we will trim. Okie doke, there we go, happy. Here's a, uh, another good, uh, good little bit of awareness for fairly uh, low time pilots, is that uh, this, looking out the front, looks uh, atrocious visibility, which it is, it's not spectacular, uh, but I can see hills in front of us that I know are at least 10 k's away, so that's uh, that's practically double VMC, or is double uh, what constitutes VMC as long as we're clear of cloud. Uh, so the point I'm making there is that VMC, if you're down at the bare minimums, is, uh, is very minimal visibility. Okay, we'll depart downwind and join the circuit at mainland. 
Okay, so we'll just line up here again on Maitland's runway 08, just for another look at that technique. Mount heavy, no, but you can keep the one, two, two, one, runway 08 circuits. Okay, so fuel is on both flaps. Set zero, trim set, tailwheel not fitted. So once again, uh, different width runway, so we'll just uh, memorise that picture again to uh, give us an idea of where the ground is when we come into land. Heels on the floor and power coming up as we give a little bit of right rudder. And airspeed's alive up in good, he's a piece of good. We'll pop that nose wheel, pop and release. And you can see how as we're getting faster, I'm releasing more and more back pressure. And then as we get airborne, we're already pushing the right way in case we lost the engine. And we'll transition to our normal climb attitude. Little bit of a blustery, easterly sort of breeze coming over the trees there. Fairly typical for this runway this time of year and this time of day. Okay, so uh, let's go round. We'll have a look at some landings. Thanks for watching the takeoff video. Hope you got something out of it. And uh, we will follow on with a landing video.